Hi, Alex. What do you have going on here? Well, we are getting some green up already. Uh, we might be late for some phosphorus and potassium or just right the time. So, You also have a demonstration getting rolling in this pasture too? Yes, exactly that to that we are starting this year here. Uh, this is pretty much a pasture common that happened here in Oklahoma where the producer just left the, the pasture neglected by some time. And so, as you can see, uh, some weeds start to come in a Bermuda grass pasture and also natives started to, to grow up and also other forage or plants such as uh, Johnson grass start to invade and getting a point that what we need is exactly to renovate, to rehab this pasture. So that's what you are trying to do here. So with that in mind, what's the best way to get started? Well, that's true. First things first, and the first thing that we need to be aware of is that we need some soil sample because if the pasture was neglected, for sure we might have a need for fertilization. But how much? That's what the soil sample can help us to answer the question. In a nutshell, uh, we already did actually the soil sampling here about three weeks ago. In a nutshell, how we can do the soil sampling? Well, first, we need to realize that it's not because you have a pasture and you name that a pasture, that that pasture is the same all along. For sure, we have different types of soil, topography, and plants growing in different locations. For instance, in this pasture here, here we have more uh, upland with more a sand soil. That's why we have more natives and also more weeds concentrated there. Right there is a bottomland, and I walk there, and we saw that we have lots of Johnson grass that grow last year because it's a more wet field. Also, we have a better fertilization there. So in this case, when thinking about soil sampling, better that we split this field in different zones. After that, in each zone, it's better that we take about 15 to 20 samples at least per zone and make a composite and send that to analysis. So this, as you mentioned, was sampled three weeks ago and you have the results. What did they show? Exactly right. And I have the results right here in my pocket, actually. And I am talking what I have here because I'm working right now exactly in this spot here. And for what I'm seeing, look at that. First, I'm looking at pH here, 6.6. .6. We write on the money. That's a very good pH for all the forage that we can have here. So we don't need to bother in this specific location on Limey. And according to the soil sample, oh my God, we don't have any N here. Can you see? It's zero. So once this soil is, is a more light soil texture, we might be applying, I would say, after that the green up happens, about 100 to 150 pounds of nitrogen, actual nitrogen, that will translate in 200 to 300 pounds of urea. You mentioned quite a bit of fertilizer in that formula. Is that much necessary to get what this producer wants in terms of Bermuda grass production? Yes, that's right. What I'm doing here is exactly what the producer wants. So we are thinking on fertilizing for Bermuda grass. In this case, in native grasses, sometimes even uh, there is no economic justification to fertilize. But this in specific field, as I show here, we are very low. So in this case, even, even I recommend applying half of the phosphorus that we need for Bermuda grass, that I would say, so in this case, 30% if you want to promote some uh, native pasture, some native forage coming. And on nitrogen, once we are very low on nitrogen, I would say one application of 50 pounds after green up would be enough. I've noticed there's a, an area of the pasture that is, is mowed and right. then this is still growing as normal. Explain why the difference. That's something that I'm very curious about it. I realized that here it's a very common practice. The, the, the farmers go and by this time they go and they mow their pasture about four or five inches. Uh, and I mean, I know what's the idea behind, and it's a very good idea. When we do that, we promote that the Bermuda grass start to green up faster. And there is no better weed control than active growing forage competing with those weeds. So that's what happened when we mow. And also, for more that the, the Bermuda grass down below there is going to compete pretty well with those weeds. Some of those weeds will thrive. And when it's time to apply the herbicide, we are going to have a better coverage because you want to have all this residue covering the weeds. So when we spray the herbicide, that will cover all the leaves that's coming. 
But at the same time, I really want to know how much effective is mowing against no mowing. And that's what we are going to be evaluating in the next uh, weeks. As part of this demonstration. Exactly right. So quite a few things you, you and the team will be looking at. Oh yeah, we are going to be very busy during this season here. Well, we look forward to it and please keep us posted on how it all turns out. Of course I will. Thanks a lot, Alex. Thank you.